The Battlefield 5 beta is over, DICE came out and tried to do some damage control and it seems we are getting a German single player campaign. A lot of things to digest, but today we want to leave the controversy aside and judge the game by its merits. So we won't focus on the cyborgs too much, that topic has already been discussed in great detail. Following the budged marketing campaign for Battlefield 5, we were really looking forward to the beta, to see how the gameplay actually is. For all the odd looks and ridiculous player customizations, the gameplay itself may have some redeeming qualities. For those who want the TLDR, the game was disappointing. Some aspects were a pleasant surprise, other areas were worse than expected. Overall, the beta did not convince us to pre-order the game. But let us start from the beginning. This beta review consists out of the combined opinions of a hardcore Battlefield fan who played absolutely every Battlefield game, that's also the guy writing the history of Battlefield series on this channel, and someone who played every second Battlefield game. The latter person is me, the guy you're hearing right now. The game starts with the main menu, and that is substandard, it outright sucks. The big console game menu style buttons and confusing sub-menus of sub-menus are the absolute opposite of a streamlined experience. The Battlefield 1 menu was no masterpiece, but this one adds the cherry on top of the cake. As a PC gamer I have a mouse, so I can rather precisely navigate buttons. Giant console menus are not needed. Have you ever tried to close the game? The exit button to shut down the game is not on the main menu, it is hidden as well. Great design, I know, it's fancy and flashy. And I guess all the complaints I have are from an old school gamer. <laughs> you know, Billy, back in my days, the video games used to have different menus for your PlayStation machines and your personal computers. What I find fascinating is the scope of the beta. I mean, not the fact that they only show off two maps. That is, I guess, fine for a game that only comes with eight maps. Yeah, eight maps. What surprised me is the fact that they didn't show off all the glorious player customizations. I thought they were so proud of that, and the whole marketing was focused on that. In the beta, you were only able to paint your gun green and blue. Wow! The ability to customize specific parts of the weapon is nice, but there are other recent games that did that better. Painting details, painting de Oh yeah, right, it's Battlefield, so uh, I guess I use the dipping technique. When looking at the marketing, DICE and EA put player choice and individualization at the forefront. In the beta, they didn't even manage to include two different types of hats for each class. What is really odd is that none of the British soldiers look like British World War II infantry. The medic wears pilot gear and the others don't wear the standard British uniform. Do they just want to show off what is possible with player customization? I hope that in the final game we will be able to put together a more realistic combat uniform. Yes, individualization is nice, but not with a pilot mask for infantry. That's just dumb. Try aiming your rifle with a mask on. It'll be annoying. Also, what is up with the glasses? Considering all the goggles they have and the clothes, the British look like a bunch of kids dressed in old stuff to go and play some airsoft in the forest. Looking over to the Germans, they look a bit more uniform, although those masks look odd. I'm sure they duck them up somewhere, but they look a bit obscure. By the way, no German black women playable in the beta. I was disappointed. Will this be a theme in Battlefield 5? All the crazy customizations reserved for the Allied forces and the Germans looking rather tame, so you can tell them apart? Ah, regular uniform and helmet must be a German. Hmm, steampunk Mad Max cosplayers? Yep, those must be allied soldiers. Interesting enough, EA heard the criticism thrown against them and their game, and they did somewhat of a backpedal lately when it comes to authenticity and customization. Yet, they still left the door open to go all the way down the ridiculous customization path at a later date. But let us try to forget this over-advertised feature or lack thereof for a moment and take a look at the gameplay itself. After a few rounds with every class I can confidently say, none of the guns are hard to handle. From SMG to assault rifle or light machine gun, all of them are rather controllable. Compared to games like Rising Storm or Squad, the recoil is minimal. 
Even the classic Day of Defeat source that is way more arcadey than the other games features a lot more recoil that you have to account for. I don't really see what all the big buzz is about. I still think the recoil is minimal and certainly no issue for PC players. It is no hard task to counter a sniper even over a longer distance. Of course, when learning the guns and playing with them more, you will get more and more effective. But even after a few minutes, it wasn't too hard to lead the scoreboard. I would really like to know who came up with the brilliant idea to not give weapon attachments any effect on the guns. Instead, they went for a skill tree. Previous Battlefield games allowed you to modify your guns with corresponding visual representation. Of course, modern guns have a lot more options available for modification and ironing out flaws or adapting them to your needs, like turning an M16 into a designated marksman rifle. But World War II guns could be modified as well. Of course, not to the extent as a modern rifle, but sawing off the front post protection for your iron sights, well, that's of course less significant than attaching a laser pointer, but it would be a realistic and visually significant weapons improvement. The skill tree has no visual representation and forces you into a predetermined path of improvement. You need to choose right side or left side. Changed your mind about an upgrade? <laughs> you can't go back, the money is spent. I had the bayonet for the FG42 and realized it sucks for me, but until I gathered more money, I was stuck with it. This new skill tree based upgrade system means for newer players that picking up a dead veteran's weapon is no use anymore to improve your fighting power. The skill tree system's main purpose is not to give the consumer a handy experience, it is an attempt of implementing a new monetization system. Every modification has to be bought with in-game currency that you will also be able to purchase with real money. Let's say you want a Fallschirmjägergewehr adjusted for long-range engagements and another FG42 adjusted for short to mid-range combat. Have fun grinding to gather money or just give us your credit card number. By the way, the Battlefield game files included an unused reloading sound. This was already annoying in Battlefield 1, having to have three different versions of the same gun instead of just changing some parts on the fly. By the way, on the fly, all modifications have to be made in various submenus, and it cannot be done while in a match. DICE ruined the quite good weapons upgrade system from Battlefield 4, Battlefield 3 and even Battlefield Bad Company 2, and forces us to use an illogical, unintuitive and unfair skill tree. All to implement a better monetization system after loot box became a bad word. After a few upgrades, the gun gets too strong. After I upgraded my FG42 and shotgun, I was destroying enemies left and right without any problems. Especially those who started later and did not have access to enhanced rifles yet. The same counts for vehicles. After I upgraded to the fast reload system for the Churchill, I took the howitzer and hash ammunition to enemy tanks when they, of course, didn't stand a chance. Except for a single Sturmtiger, which killed me in 5 freaking seconds while I had full HP. <laughs> These upgrades, this skill system works in an MMO like Destiny, where players with the same skill and level fight against each other. But in a shooter, where newbies and pros play against each other on the same server, it doesn't work out so well. This is unfair. But this is a point of critique not only applicable to Battlefield 5, this is a general problem with most unranked matchmaking games. New players already have a huge disadvantage. The lack of knowledge about the game mechanics, a lack of map knowledge and so on. And this new skill system gives them an additional disadvantage. This is plain stupid. But now let us talk about the classes and their equipment. Battlefield 5 has symmetrical classes, meaning that you will spawn with an STG-44 no matter if you are a German assault soldier or British. During World War II you had clashes of rather extreme differences. Polish cavalry charging German tanks is a myth, but you had troops equipped with bolt-action rifles and countering opponents equipped with the first modern assault rifle. But I assume giving every side dedicated classes with realistic equipment would be too much of a balancing job for a casual shooter where classes are getting extremely streamlined. For example, in the past you had an engineer class tasked with construction and equipped with explosives. And then we had an anti-tank soldier equipped with ranged anti-tank weapons. We used to have specialized classes. I have the feeling that DICE thinks we are too stupid for specialized units. That is why every single class has to be able to do everything. The medic has a grenade launcher and the ammo soldier has anti-infantry mines and anti-tank mines. 
Here's an idea for a dedicated anti-tank class for a World War II game. Give them an anti-tank rifle. For the Brits, a nice boys anti-tank rifle and for the Germans, the PZB-39. And to level up, the British get a Piat and the Germans get a Panzerfaust. Oh well, the Panzerfaust is already in use by both sides in the game. <laughs> Authenticity. While we are talking about mines, it seems they forgot to make them destructible. Like the S-Mine, also known as the Bouncing Betty. When I found an enemy mine, I couldn't destroy it, not with my guns or my grenades. I could do this back in Battlefield Bad Company and even before. Strangely enough, I could destroy the bright yellow anti-tank mines. My standard tactic, by the way, was to run up to a distracted tank, lay my mines, shoot the mines and take the tank with me. Suicidal, but effective. It is really sad that DICE thought it wouldn't be necessary to animate the S-Mine, the Schrapnellmine, like the real one. In reality, once triggered, the mine would jump up into the air and about at waist height it would explode, sending about 350 metal balls flying in every direction. So you could survive it if you lay down on the ground fast enough. Theoretically, yeah, very theoretically. A feature that we saw in Call of Duty 5 World at War. Interesting gameplay mechanic, but uh, a bit unrealistic. Battlefield 5 incorporates many great ideas and concepts that make the game interesting. I legitimately had fun while testing, but seconds later some painfully stupid design decisions killed all the appreciation. First of all, the squad revive. I love it. Finally, I can help my squad mates even if I'm not a medic. The new revive itself is good, it makes it harder to Rambo revive. But then DICE thought, hey, after you died, you have to wait 5 seconds before being able to join back into the action. Always. Which means players who have been good boys, like me, and didn't skip, get punished. Even if I am laying down on the ground crying for a medic, a design decision I like, I still have to wait a couple of seconds in the spawn menu. If I had just skipped my death, giving my fellow teammates no chance to revive me and save a valuable ticket, I would have been back into the action faster. In Battlefield 1, where DICE introduced this feature, you didn't spawn any faster, so every pro gamer that hit the spacebar with his forehead after dying had to wait just as long as those who waited for a revive. But now in Battlefield 5, you get punished for being a team player, and that in a game where they tried everything to force you to be a good team player. I also felt a bit inconclusive about when I was able to revive someone or not. In Battlefield 1 and all the other BFs before, some devs made it impossible to be revived, like a melee attack, big explosions or a headshot. But now I can be revived when I was stabbed, run over by a tank or even blasted away by a V1 rocket. But then an enemy medic shot me in the stomach with his little pea shooter and I had a critical death. The game forgets to tell you valuable information like that. By the way, there was a bug where you died, are being sent back to the spawn menu, but your teammates were able to revive you simultaneously, so you are stuck in the spawn menu. Medic? Sniper? Assault? Medic. Sniper. <laughs> This theme of not conveying information is carried out through the whole game. After I found out that the ammo soldier is able to repair tanks, I posted that into the game's chat a few times. Every time I got surprised answers. People didn't know this. This is important information. Now to a thing I loved. Which is the new spotting feature, especially since I am an enthusiastic Rising Storm 2 Vietnam player, which uses a similar system. I like being able to tell my teammates where I saw something, especially if there's a threat hiding behind cover. The system works but still has some kinks here and there. I have no problem spotting an enemy sniper across the map, but a freaking 7.5 meter long, 3 meter wide and 40 ton heavy Churchill, which is crawling up just a few meters in front of me, eh, not spotable. And why is it so hard to get into a tank? Do you have to find a special spot to get into it? And uh, why the fuck am I not able to duck into cover when manning the turret mounted machine gun? This was an awesome feature back in Battlefield 2, and since every third player is a sniper nowadays, you are fresh meat up there. 
The ability to tow big guns with vehicles is a neat little feature, something I have not seen in any other first person shooter. So I was really excited about the concept, quickly moving my anti-tank gun into a firing position and engage enemy vehicles. That's cool, that's immersive. Especially with friends, coordinating this is great. But DICE decided for whatever reason to remove the ability to turn the gun around, something you could do in Battlefield 1, and that's not even that hard in real life. A few years ago I moved around a Russian anti-tank gun by myself. So you were forced to maneuver around to put the gun into a correct firing position, which wasted time and drew enemy attention to us. Okay, or we were just too stupid to find the correct button for turning the gun around. We couldn't turn the guns by hand, but what we could do is fire them while they were being towed. That's incredibly unrealistic and kinda dumb, but it would have looked less stupid with reloading animations. Did DICE remove the reloading animation from these guns or just not implement them yet? I like the gun animations in Battlefield 1. It was a nice little detail and sure it wasn't perfect, but it is 10 times better than just waiting until the machine spirit has magically reloaded the gun. The new building mechanic sent me into a bit of a funk. It is a nice idea but needs more work. It's not too hard to get a grasp of, but to be honest it looks so-so. The little indie game Squad made this better, at least a bit. Creating realistic building animations is pretty much impossible at the moment. Well, and realism, eh, you cannot carry around hundreds of kilos of sand and sandbags to fill. <laughs> you are able to generate a lot of points with just building. I tested it, building every single fortification I can find and not engaging the enemy. That brought me to the top of the scoreboard. I hope they improve this mechanic for Battlefield Bad Company 3 when it eventually comes out because I see a lot of potential in this. And it has been compared to Fortnite a lot, but honestly I don't find it that extreme. Something about the planes. I find the flying mechanic rather boring. The planes didn't feel fast, the areas were too small, no fast paced and action filled dogfights and the dropped payload generally appeared rather weak. DICE should look to War Thunder for how to make compelling air fight mechanics and generally increase the amount of fighters in the air. The air battle above Narvik was visually stunning, but our combat experience in the bombing runs went generally rather uninterrupted by enemy fire or enemy planes. One of my biggest concerns is the lack of ammunition. In the beta you spawned with only two magazines and a tank had only 18 rounds. A Tiger I had about 92 rounds for the main gun and over 4000 rounds for the MG. The Churchill MK7 had 84 rounds and nearly 10,000 for the machine guns. I was more occupied with restocking ammunition than actually fighting. I know supplies were often low and 92 rounds for a Tiger is pretty much a best case scenario, but if I'm supposed to ignore the inaccuracy of having a Tiger tank at the Battle of Narvik, then at least give me some ammunition, okay? Don't get me wrong, I was always the guy who wanted limited ammunition for tanks, but please, a bit more. This is too little. In the newer Battlefield games the environment is destructible, so people are prone to shoot a bit more to destroy cover to check if someone's hiding behind it. The tanks feel more like cheap one-time use devices and not like a devastating killing machine that it's worth keeping alive. Oh, by the way, DICE, could you rework the machine guns please? It felt like a water gun. The range is a joke and it overheats way too fast, and especially on the half trucks, where the machine gun is the only real weapon. And while we are at the topic of vehicles, the amount of vehicles is a little small, at least in the beta. And the fact that the British troops don't have their own light vehicles is ridiculous. The British had the German half truck in the beta. Where is the brand carrier and the two pounder gun? Just a short while ago, after the beta, they did teaser a few vehicles, so I hope that um, we are still getting a few more. Visually, this game is of course top of the line of its current generation. What I found strange though is that when I fired up EA's Battlefront 2, I couldn't get around the feeling that BF5 is a little step back and maybe not all features were in effect yet, but um, yeah, still it wasn't that stunning. 
The Frostbite engine is famous for the great looks and destructible environments, and in certain areas it really looks great. In other places on the maps, not too much. Every time I went underwater in this game, I was thrown back to the 90s. The underwater environment just looks... bland. The little houses on Narvik work great with the destructible environments. They remind me a lot of Bad Company 2. <laughs> great memories there. I definitely like that. But as so often with Battlefield 5, great impressions are blown away with a civilian car that proves to be an amazing tank obstacle. It just looks ridiculous when a Tiger tank is unable to, well, crush this little car. Why were these not destructible in the first place? They could not be destroyed by a tank or explosives. The sound was surprisingly mediocre for a Battlefield game, especially for a game series which raised the bar for audio fidelity and quality with Bad Company so massively. I had problems localizing enemies, and the weapons sound weak and lack a certain punch. None of them sounded deadly or dangerous. I know real life guns often sound very similar to each other, especially to untrained ears, but in video games distinguishing weapons and thereby enemies by sound is an important element. This is also a reason why equipping the Wehrmacht and the British Army with the same weapons is a bit of a lazy idea, but I guess that makes balancing a lot easier. <laughs> I had a distinct feeling of recycling while playing Battlefield 5. Nearly all close combat weapons and every single combat animation, like the stabbing, were taken from Battlefield 1. As I was driving the 3 inch British gun carrier I thought I was driving the British Mark 7 from the First World War. It used the same gun and reload sounds. The debris on Narvik was also reused from the Battlefield 1 DLC for the Tsar. Don't get me wrong here, I know that recycling stuff from your previous game to save time and money is a common practice and that's fine. Every company does that. Early CSGO maps were built in large parts with Left 4 Dead 2 assets and Counter-Strike Source almost reused everything from Half-Life 2. But Battlefield 5 has in some parts Call of Duty levels of recycling. It's just pretty obvious. It still looks like a new game, it's nothing criminal. It's just something I find worth pointing out. Many bugs in the Battlefield 5 beta were already fixed in Battlefield 1. A couple of features which worked fine in the previous game were now broken. Battlefield 5 is no simple reskin of Battlefield 1, yet I get the feeling that Battlefield 5's development couldn't have been too long. If I was cynical, I could say they spent so much time on revising the monetization methods. <laughs> I have no evidence for that, but just a strange feeling. It is noticeable that DICE is making Battlefield more and more easier, dumber and simpler, trying to get everyone to play their games. But when you try to make your game appeal to everyone, you will alienate those who like the game for what it is or was. We have seen that with the reaction to the very first trailer. The problem with that trailer was, they've managed to alienate huge chunks of the community before even delivering one little piece of information about the actual gameplay. This whole controversy is just a side battle to me. Other things are far more important, for, at least for me. They are still taking away control from the community. We won't be able to rent dedicated servers from hosting providers. We can't use plugins or scripts to create our own experiences, let alone building own community maps. I love to play on servers with limited sniper slots or pistol only, knife only, sniper only. In the past, you've looked for a server and if you liked it, you stayed there and came back many times. It became like a second home. Meeting the same people again and again, creating a community within a community, and maybe finding some friends. Sadly, this is a relic from the past. Our conclusion? Battlefield isn't Battlefield anymore. It hasn't been for a long time, but you already knew this. The old times are not coming back, so one might consider the option of moving to a different game for their World War II experience. The options are plentiful. If you enjoyed the previous Battlefield, you will probably enjoy this as well. For someone who is just looking for two hours of quick fun on the Xbox after work to relax before going to bed, this game, just like Call of Duty, may be a suitable pick. But for the hardcore gamer or the general PC shooter enthusiast, this is a pass. It may be fun for a short while, but you won't find a great challenge here. If you played the beta and hope it will massively improve from there, tough luck. This beta's main focus wasn't finding bugs, it was a promotion event, just like many other betas nowadays. 
they are what used to be the demo release. The game was not pushed back to improve it, it was pushed back to improve the marketing. Battlefield 5 has many good ideas, a couple of good concepts, but they've got undermined and destroyed by many more bad design decisions. I so much want to like this game as a veteran from the very first hours. Battlefield is amongst my favorite franchises. If EA doesn't realize what made Battlefield great back in the days and why we loved it, this series will die and lose all its meaning and die of irrelevancy. Does anyone remember Medal of Honor? It used to be the biggest shooter franchise out there. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, maybe stick around and check out some of our other videos like the History of Battlefield series. And of course we invite you to leave your opinions in the comment section down below. If you agree or disagree with our assessment of the game, tell us why. So see you guys next time or down below in the comment section. Till then, have a nice day and as always, goodbye and guten Tag.